Okay, so today I will show you how you can spice up your robot project by adding robot eyes using this 16x8 LED matrix display. And as I talk, you can see I have a few of the animations running on those 128 blue LEDs. They are all driven by this chip on the back of the PCB, the name is AIP1640. And this chip is of course using multiplexing. If you want to know more about how multiplexing works, I have a video about that, I will put the link down in the description. The chip uses the i c connection, so we only need 4 wires to connect it to the Arduino Uno, 2 wires for the power supply and the SDA for data and SCL for clock. Here you can see the connection, the ground goes to ground, the VCC goes to 5 volts, SDA goes to pin A4, but you can also connect it to the dedicated SDA pin, which is in here, and the SCL, the serial clock, is connected to pin A5, but again, you can also connect it to the SCL pin, which is in here. Those are the very same pins, just using different names. Once we have everything connected, we can start writing our sketch. Unfortunately from the PCB alone, it's very hard to tell what's the name of the module or which company makes it. I did get my module from the company called Key Studio, and they have a nice wiki page describing how to use this product. It shows how the module should be connected to the Arduino Uno, and there is also some sample code, which is something that we will start with, so I'll copy the code into the clipboard and paste it into the Arduino IDE. Make sure that the Arduino Uno is selected and hit the upload button. And after a few seconds, we should see some images on the LED matrix display. There is the heart symbol, some face and something that I don't really recognize. Actually there are two faces, but they are very similar, so total of four different images. So let's go back to the Arduino IDE and get a closer look at the code. And it might be a little bit confusing because some of those variables are not being used, but the first thing that you notice is there is no special library being used. And that's because the whole I2C communication is done manually using bit banging, meaning that we are using the digital write to just write those individual pins, which also means that while we are using pins A4 and A5 for the I2C communication, we can pretty much use any digital pins. So as a first step, let's try to simplify this as much as possible and only show one static image. Again, I don't think that I need those variables, so I'll delete those. And there is some commented out variable called table. Let's try to show this one and delete the other table variable. Now inside our main loop, there is some kind of delay count, which I don't think that we need, so I'll delete this one. And I only want to send those individual values from the array called table, which is a one dimensional array with 16 different bytes, one for each individual column. Let's try to upload it one more time and see what happens. And now we see just one image, some kind of arrow or maybe the V symbol. So let's look at the content of the array called table and see what those individual values mean. And all those values have 0x prefix, which means that those are hexadecimal values. And with the help of the calculator, 0, 1 means 1 in decimal as well. So if I instead type in just 1, that will be pretty much the same, but that will not tell us anything about those individual LEDs. So what we can do is we can also type those numbers in binary format by typing capital B and then 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros and 1, 2, 3 with the last number being 1 and this kind of resembles the first column on our LED display. Let's see what happens if I convert all the other hexadecimal numbers into binary format. And I think that you might start seeing some pattern here. If I highlight the number 1 and search for it, this pretty much looks like what we see on the display, except it's being rotated by 90 degrees. So now you can draw your images using zeros and ones, but I think that much better way would be to use some graphic editor to do that. And in the best case, some graphic editor that supports animations. Thankfully there is one, it's free and online and called Piscal. By the way, I've used this editor in my older videos. When I was playing with the Arduino Uno R4 Wi-Fi, which also has the LED matrix display only a little bit smaller. And also when I was testing those LED badges, those have slightly bigger resolution. Links to both videos should be in the description. Anyway, let's go back to the Piscal application. And the first things first, we need to change the resolution to match our LED display resolution, which is of course 16 by 8 pixels. And then I will change the foreground color to be white color. And I can use the pen tool to draw stuff. And if I use the right button on the mouse, I'm erasing pixels. So my idea was that I will have some kind of idle face that will be displayed all the time. And from time to time, I will show some kind of animation. So something like this could be the idle display. And again, from time to time, I want to play some kind of animations. And for that, I need to create more keyframes. 
Now as soon as I do this, I will see a preview on the right side and just because the second frame is empty, it's just blinking. So what I can do instead is just duplicate the first frame and then do some slight changes to it. And let's just make those eyes more look to the right and then back to the left so it creates a seamless loop. Unfortunately, there is no simple way how to set the timing for the individual frames. So when I want to slow down the animation for some frames, I just duplicated those frames. Just keep in mind that this will take more memory on the Arduino board. So here is my 8th frame animation for moving eyes. And now it's time to turn those into zeros and ones. And while we can do this manually, I think a much better way will be to automate this. Especially because the BISCL application allows exporting the images in a few different file formats. We can export this as the GIF animation, or we can also export this as a PNG file where all those individual frames will be part of one file. We can also export individual PNG files by selecting the zip option. And finally, there is an option to export this as a C file, which might be tempting because we need a C file, but the colors are stored in the 32-bit RGBA file format, which is not what we need. So I think that better option will be to export those as individual PNG files by selecting this zip option and clicking download the zip file. This produces 8 PNG files that we can convert into the C-style array using the image to CPP website. So once I open the website, I can select those PNG images, scroll down and make sure that the background is set to black color. So now I can see those previews down here and change the draw mode to vertical because we are storing those images by columns and then click the generate code and copy output. So this is what we have and this is what we want to have. So we want to turn this into the 2D array basically by adding curly braces on the beginning and on the end of the line while deleting this last comma character. And again, we can do this manually or we can try to use the find and replace function by typing control F. And I think that for something like this, it would be nice to use the regular expression by clicking on this button to enable the regular expressions. First, we want to start look for the comment line, which always starts with two forward slash characters. And there is any number of characters, so I'll type in dot and asterisk. That will pretty much fill the entire line. I think that the next character will be a new line, so backward slash n. And then I want to capture anything from the beginning of the line. So beginning is this symbol. Again, dot asterisk, so any line until the end of the line. But I don't want to search for the last comma, so I'll type in comma. And then there is one space and I think there is one more new line character. So that will pretty much search for everything. But what we can do is we can add some brackets and by adding the brackets, we will capture some groups. So for example, the comment line, if I put it inside the brackets, so this and this until the end of the line. Now this will be captured as a group number one. So this first line will be group number one and I will do the same with the second line. So from the start of the line, which is this character, I will capture everything except for the last comma. So until now, and it will be captured as a second group. And now when we perform the replace function, we can use $1 and $2 to replace those groups. I want to start with the second group, so first there will be a second group, and I want to put those inside the curly braces, just like that. And I want to actually have the comma character after the curly braces, so I'll put the comma character after the curly braces, one space in between, and then we can also insert the first group, which will be the comment line. Now I think that the main disadvantage of using the regular expression is that everything looks kind of cryptic, but when I press replace all button, suddenly everything was replaced and we've saved a lot of time. And it was nice to include the comment line because sometimes the image to CPP website will simply change the order of the images. You can see one, two, three, four, and now it's six. So what I want to do is move the number five, so four, five, six, seven like that. And then I guess I can just put this into the very first code, the one that we copied from the Keys Studio website. I will replace the content of the table array with our new images. I don't want to include the very last comma character. And we don't have four images, but we have eight different images now. And then I believe down here, I also want to change this number four to be number eight and maybe make the delay in between those frames slightly smaller, for example, like 30 milliseconds. And with that change, let's try to upload it to the Arduino. And now we see our moving eyes animation on the LED matrix display. That was kind of simple, right? There is a few things that you should keep in mind. The first one is the memory usage. One image takes 16 bytes, which is actually a very small chunk of the memory, but it quickly adds up as you add more frames to your animations. If you create 10 animations with 10 frames each, suddenly you have 100 frames and now it takes 1.6 kilobytes and we only have 2 kilobytes of RAM memory on the Arduino Uno. The second note is about not using any dedicated Arduino library. There is a line in the code which sets the brightness of the display, but if you want to use a different value, you have to open the datasheet for the used chip and then look for the brightness settings, which I believe is on page 18, and here are the bit values. In our code, we are using the value 8a for the brightness, 
which according to the data sheet is 1000, so 1000, and then it's 1010, so 1010, so something in the middle. If we change it to 1000, we will have a dimmer display, and if you, for example, use value 1001110, we will get much brighter display. And that's pretty much it. As you've seen at the beginning, I have a few animations going on on the display and then change randomly from time to time. If you have any questions for this project, please let me know down in the comment section. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you soon. Thanks and bye.